Okay, so what we're going to take a look at is an experiment that we can do to determine the specific heat capacity of a material. In this case, we're going to try and find it for this block, which I found lying around. I think it's maybe aluminium. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to try and find its specific heat capacity. Or to phrase that another way, we're going to work out how much energy it takes to increase the temperature of one kilogram of this material. Now, I've already measured the mass of it, this, but that's the first thing you have to do, measure the mass. So this is exactly one kilogram, which is handy. Okay, so that, that's the first thing we do, find its mass. Okay, so then what we have to do is actually set up our circuit. So the first thing I'll do is I'll draw a circuit diagram so you can see what we are working towards. So essentially what we've got in our circuit, um, we've got our... Uh, power supply in here which we're going to turn up as high as we can this one it's about six volts so let's put six volts but we can turn it up as high as we like so that is connected into a joule meter so um, you don't really come across a circuit symbol for that so let's just do a circle and let's put joule meter and then what we do is we then connect the joule meter into a heater so heater has this symbol so it's a resistor with lines in it so all resistors uh, turn energy into heat but this one we're doing it deliberately so we have a circuit circuit symbol like this so that's what we're going to do so that's actually, let's actually build this circuit so first thing we're going to do is plug into our joule meter and so You'll notice it has black and red connections on it, so they're a bit temperamental. They seem to like it if you do it. So black on here goes into black in here. Red in here goes to red in here. So you have to make sure that these are plugged into the input side because this is where we're putting our energy in. So you see we're plugged into the input side. Then we're going to plug into a joule meter. So this side, it doesn't really care where it plugs into where. We plug into our output and that's going to go into this immersion heater here so we can just plug it in. So now what we've got, this is the circuit that we drew a diagram of earlier. So energy goes into the input side, it measures how much energy goes in, that goes into an immersion heater. So if we look closely at this, you can see that it tells you that each time this light flashes, that means you've delivered 100 joules. So you actually have to essentially watch and count how many flashes there are um, if we want to run this. But there's actually a way around that which I'm going to show you in a second. Okay, so then in terms of setting it up, we've got a board so we're not going to burn the desk. Oops. Put our material on there. Um, so once we start heating it, we're not going to be touching that material again because it can end up getting quite hot. Um, what we're going to do is measure our starting temperature. So on the top of this here, you can see it's got a little hole. So that's for us to stick our thermometer in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it for a few seconds. It, um, thermometers don't respond particularly quickly. And we'll use that to get our temperature measurement at zero time. So while that's adjusting, let's draw ourselves a table of results. So we are going to want to know what the temperature is. And we measure that in degrees Celsius. We want to know the uh, time that which that temperature is in seconds and we're going to want to know what the temperature change is which again will be measured in degrees celsius so this is going to be calculated using the temperature that we're in the process of measuring so let's give this here so we are going to be leaving a fairly long period of time between taking measurements here it takes quite a while to heat aluminium up it takes quite a lot of energy uh, to do that so let's have a look at our thermometer first of all so in terms of taking measurements from a thermometer what we have to do is first you have to give it time to actually settle and then what you have to make sure you do is actually get down at eye level with where the reading is so the temperature is about here so we need to be at eye level so we don't get any parallax error so that is currently 21 degrees um, in there so going back to our table so when our time is 0 0.0 Zero, zero. Uh, we can measure to the nearest 0 0.1 seconds with these stopwatches. Our time was 21 degrees Celsius. Uh, with a thermometer, we can usually measure to the nearest half a degree. So I can give an de extra decimal place in here, but this decimal place will either be a zero or a five. It won't be anything else. And we haven't changed temperature yet 
because we haven't started heating it yet. Uh, so that's our first row of table there. So what we're, I'm going to do now is actually measure the power of the immersion heater. And so instead of counting the flashes during the whole experiment, so this experiment takes about 20, 30 minutes or so to actually get a set of data, we're going to figure out the power of this heater, or say it another way, we're going to figure out the energy delivered per second by this heater. So the first thing we have to do is actually let this get warm up and get hot. So I'm going to put it on the um, wooden board over here. So I'm not going to put it in the aluminium yet, I'm just going to put it on this wooden board. And so that's not, it's not going to burn anything, and I'm just going to turn it on, because it takes a while to heat up and get going. So uh, let's get that started doing that. As I said, I've got the power pack turned up to its max value currently. So if we look at our joule meter, you should see that it's going to start to flash. So what this means is it's delivered 100 joules of energy. Okay, so there's 100 joules. Then if we wait, you can see we have to wait. There we go, it's now delivered 200 joules. So it flashes every time we've delivered 100 joules. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna measure how many times it flashes in about a 30 second or so period, and then we can work out the amount of energy it delivers per second. So uh, that should be nicely warmed up. I'm not gonna to touch it, I'm just feeling it. Yeah, it's giving us a nice amount of heat. So let's start that. So I'm gonna start it at the end of the flash. Okay, so now we essentially just have to wait. That's one flash. Remember, we're timing to the end of the flash, not the start. So now we've had one. That's 100 joules being delivered. That's 200. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to time till the end of the third flash, so when we know that 300 joules has been delivered. Waiting for the end. Okay, so we know because it's flashed three times that we've delivered 300 joules of energy. So if we go back to our paper, so I'm just going to do this below there. So you know the energy that we've delivered is 300 joules because it's flashed three times. And the time it took to do it, if we actually have a look at our stopwatch, is 35.7 seven seconds. Now power is the energy you've transferred per second. So what we're going to do is going to do 300 divided by 35.77 and I'll grab my calculator. Okay so uh, we're going to do uh, 300 divided by 35.77. Um, so this we have a look comes out as 8.38. Okay, so let's not be crazy about it. So let's, we're going to go 8.4. We could write joules per second, but power is measured in watts. Okay, and we're going to use this a little bit later on, so I'll just leave it there. So the final thing we actually need to add into our table, we need to know how much energy has been delivered, so the energy has been delivered to the block by this point. So to start with, we haven't delivered any energy to our block. So we, we're just going to get a nice fat zero in there. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll then calculate how much energy has been transferred each time. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to start our experiment going. Um, so at this point, uh, let's reset our time so we can get that going. Uh, this is going to be pretty hot because it's currently still switched on and it's going to, so I'm going to grab it by the wires, not by the metal, uh, because I don't particularly feel like getting burnt. But we need to make sure this um, is up to full power before we start it here. So essentially, I'm going to drop this into the iron block and start the time simultaneously. So let's do that. Get this out all the way in. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wrap it in some insulation to stop heat escaping to the surroundings. Okay, and hey presto, some insulation has now appeared on it. Um, so the heater was running for a little while, but as I said, we're going to be running this experiment for sort of 20, 30 minutes or so, uh, so that happening over 30 seconds, not too important. Um, so 
Now we're nice and toasty. Essentially what we will do is periodically we're going to take readings. So I reckon I'll check in in about five minutes time or so, take a measurement of the temperature um, at that time and then we'll I'll show you how we calculate how much energy we've transferred to it. So I'll pause uh, this video and then we'll check back in at that time. Okay, so let's check back in uh, and we can see, we, let's, let's have a look at what our temperature is. So that is currently 23.5 at 5 minutes and 50. Okay, so that's 23.5 there. Uh, the fact it's formatted like that is annoying. So 5 minutes is 300 seconds. So, so that's 350. Uh, at this point, the point zero zero is uh, somewhat pointless, but that's the precision of our device. So we can see our temperature has increased by two and a half degrees since the start. Now, this is where the calculation we did earlier comes in. So we know that our heater delivers 8.4 joules every second. So if we multiply that by this time, that will tell us how much energy. So we're going to do 8.4, we're going to multiply that by 350, and we get a uh, 2940. Uh, so we're not going to be super precise. So I'm going to round that to two significant V. So I'm just going to write 2900. Uh, when we end up pointing on a graph, we're not going to be able to plot the 40 anyway. And this 8.4 is rounded. So I'm just going to round that to the two sig figs there. Okay, so that's our next measurement. I'll pause it again and jump in in about five minutes' time. Okay, so let's take another reading. Uh, so we're up around about 10 minutes now. So let's see what we're at. Temperature is 25.5 at 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So let's go back to our table. So we're at 25.5. Uh, 10 minutes is 600 seconds. So it's 630 seconds because it was six, um, 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So we've now got a temperature change from the start of, what's that, 4.5 degrees. So temperature change is always measured compared to the start, not the previous one. And we can calculate how much energy we've delivered. So we've done 630 seconds. And we're going to times that by 8.4, which is the power we calculated earlier. And you can see that comes out as 5292. So we're going to round that again. So that's about 5,300 um, there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll let it run for another five minutes or so, get ourselves another reading, and then we'll look at calculating the specific heat capacity. Okay, so we're hit, pretty much hitting the 15 minute part mark. So let's take off another reading. Uh, so we're at 27 degrees at, that was pretty much 15 minutes. Okay, so let's get our data in there. So our temperature, what did I say that was? 27 degrees. Uh, so that, that was 15 minutes, which is 900 seconds. Our temperature change since the start is 6 degrees there. And we'll calculate how much energy we've delivered. So we're going to do... 900 times by 8.4, it must be 4.8 then. So that's 7560, so that's going to round up to 7600 there. And so like ordinarily I collect more than data than this, and when you're doing it in class you almost certainly will, uh, but this will be enough data to actually find the uh, specific heat capacity. So let's actually do that part of this. So the equation that we're going to use um, you might see it in either of two forms or you sometimes see it written like this where Q stands for thermal energy. It doesn't matter, they're both getting at the same thing. So the key is if we want to find out what C is, we need to get it by itself. So I'm going to divide first across by mass. Then I'm going to divide across by temperature change. So that's going to be on our bottom line. And we've got our equation to calculate specific heat capacity. So I'm going to do three calculations and then we'll get our average one. So if we go to our data, our first set of data is you've got a temperature change of 2.5 degrees when we've got 2,900 joules delivered. So we're going to do um, 
Our energy we've delivered is 2,900. We said earlier its mass is one kilogram, so that's nice and easy. And our first temperature change was 2.5 degrees. So let's do that calculation. And we get, so the, the answer actually comes out as 1160, uh, but we're only going to give that to two significant figures, so it's about 1200 uh, joules per kilogram degree C. We'll do the same thing uh, for the second one. So you can see for the second one, our temperature change is 4.5 degrees with 5,300 uh, joules of energy being delivered. Uh, mass is still one, that's now 4.5. So we're going to do 5,300 divided by 4.5, essentially. So that comes out as like 1177. So again, 1,200 joules per kilogram per degree Kelvin. Let's do our final one. So our final one, we had a temperature change of 6 when we had 7,600. 1. And we had a temperature change of 6. So let's do that calculation. 7,600 divided by 6. Uh, that actually comes out as 1,300 joules there. Um, so then what we're going to do is calculate our average. So we're going to do 1,200 plus 1,200 plus 1,300 divided by 3. And when I round that to an appropriate number of significant figures, so there's our sum. Divided by 3, so that comes out as 1233. So I'm just going to write that as 1200 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. And what we found is the specific heat capacity of our particular material here. So to finish off, um, I'm going to leave the experiment to cool down. Uh, it's actually not very hot because it's not even 30 degrees, but we'll just uh, remove the insulation, let it cool off, and then we'll be ready to disassemble the equipment and we'll all be done.